Today is Friday the 23rd of September. Now, myself and Neve are actually in London this weekend. And if you can't already tell by what I'm wearing, we are here for business purposes. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that proprietary trading firms have absolutely taken over the retail trading industry in the past two to three years. And it's really awesome to see because the truth is many traders can trade, but they're severely undercapitalized. Go back 10 or 15 years to get proprietary funding, you would have to pay for a desk on a physical trading floor, sometimes two and a half or 3,000 pounds per month simply to sit on that floor. And after a lengthy assessment period, you would maybe get funded with a pretty small pot of capital after putting out all of that time and cost expenditure. Now, fast forward 10 years, we're seeing online proprietary trading firms becoming increasingly more popular. Now today, myself and Neve are going to visit Audacity Capital. Audacity Capital are a proprietary trading firm with a physical trading floor here in London. And they invited myself and Neve to come and meet their team, see their operation, and see what sets them apart from other firms operating in the industry at the moment. So with the intro out of the way, welcome back to another episode of Day in the Life. So we're back in London. Now myself and Neve arrived in London around about 9.30 on Friday morning. We then jumped on the London Underground and made our way over to Canary Wharf, which is where Audacity Capital's new office is located. Audacity Capital are actually located in the One Canada Square building, which is right in the centre of Canary Wharf. Hi Sam. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Hi Sam. Hello. Elena. Elena. Perfect. Let's uh, head on up there. After getting to meet the team, the first place I wanted to go was the trading floor to meet their traders and check out their operation. I then had the opportunity to sit down with Matthew, the Head of Operations at Audacity Capital. So Matthew, introduce yourself a little bit, tell us a bit about your story. Um, me growing up, I was a sporty person, I played football, I played golf, I did athletics. So my undergraduate was business and sports studies. Right. So I was had no real experience in trading, I had no real knowledge about trading itself. Uh, I then decided that I wanted to do a Masters in Finance and that was when my eyes were first open to trading itself. Uh, from there I realised that I wanted to start my career personally in trading. So I was looking around at opportunities, how I can get into trading, banks, hedge funds. And that was when I really discovered proprietary trading in itself. Uh, I started on the Hidden Talents programme here at Audacity Capital. And from there I went through talent acquisition and a support team role. And now in the role that I am currently doing, which is the head of operations. I hadn't traded growing up as a teenager or anything like that, my interest in it really started whilst I was at university in my master's degree. Um, it was something that wasn't covered at all whilst I was studying and realised that it was something that I really wanted to learn more about and get involved in. Um, so it was at that point, uh, I think maybe around four or five years ago, that I initially first started trading. How important do you think it is for people who have like come out of uni, for example, if they want to go on and be a professional trader, mm -hmm. how important do you think it is for them to have experience surrounded by people who have actually been doing it for a while? Yeah, 100%. It, it's absolutely critical that you have experience trading in live market conditions, that you're learning from people that are experienced in the financial markets. Um, there is so much misinformation out there. So it really is important that you are getting training and help from people that have the experience themselves. In terms of your learning yourself, you don't actually start learning until you actually start placing that initial first trade. What we say to people here now is the way that you can get the most out of your trading experience is by starting trading live straight away. 
Um, you learn by making mistakes, mm. things that you do well, things that you don't do well. It is a completely different environment when you're trading from a demo account from when you're trading on a live account. And that's something that's fundamentally important throughout our entire business here at Audacity. Everything is focused around getting you that trading experience on a live account and not trading on a demo account, fake money. Paper money and demo accounts can be great for scenarios where you're just getting your feet wet, you're learning, you know, okay, what candlesticks are, how the markets can operate and move. But when you're actually getting serious about learning and starting to trade, it's, it's crucial that you're trading with real money. Now, typically when we think about prop firms, we think about prop firms as being something for traders who can trade, but are simply undercapitalized. But that's not always the case. Many professional traders who have the funds already opt to go for proprietary trading firms. And we're about to find out why. What would you say for someone who's actually looking to get into trading and they're thinking about, they've got the money where they could start with the minimum account size yeah. you offer of 15K, right? They could start with 15K of your money mm -hmm. or they could start with 15K of your own money. What would be the advantage to go in the proprietary route? Because obviously in proprietary trading, there is rules and that kind of thing mm -hmm. that you're going to have. How, could, how are these rules beneficial for a trader who's just entering yeah. the market? Absolutely, 100%. You know, something that we've seen, we've been operating for over 10 years, we've funded over 5,000 traders, so we've had a, a large amount of experience of seeing people come through from people that are already highly experienced on live accounts, people that are complete, relative beginners in terms of the amount of experience they have trading with real money. Um, it is really, really important that you are always holding yourself accountable when you're trading. You're, it's not like any other job, you know, you don't have a boss, a manager who's saying you have to do this, you have to do that, holding you accountable in the day-to-day -day things that you're doing. Mm. When you're trading, you have to do all of that for yourself. However, if you're part of a proprietary trading firm who's providing you with an amount of capital, they are going to set, like you said, rules in place that you have to follow in order to continue managing capital with these people. And typically, nine times out of ten, these rules are in place for a reason. And one thing it will certainly do is it will hold you accountable. It will allow you to not break your own rules. One of the biggest reasons that traders have large drawdowns on their accounts is because they break their own risk management rules. Whereas if they're trading with us, if they're managing live funds with us, that's not possible. They're not allowed to break their own mm. risk management rules. So we see traders that come in, they may have a little bit of experience, three, six months experience trading with real money, and they have mixed results. Their account is up, it's down, it's up, it's down. However, the biggest reason for that is because they're breaking their own rules. They come in, they have a structure in place, rules that they have to follow, and you see straight away when they come into that kind of environment that their results are gonna, they straight away increase. After getting to know Matthew a little bit more, I then wanted to head back to the trading floor and find out what it takes to become a trader at Audacity Capital. So we obviously have a group of traders here who are renting the space. The majority of them are funded by us, so are managing live capital with us. They're also trading their own personal accounts as well. So the people that are here on the trading floor, are uh, they're all making their full-time income from trading the FX markets. What kind of things are you looking for in a trader? I mean, I guess this goes even for when people are applying for accounts. What are the kind of things you're looking to shine through yeah. when you're looking at someone's application? Yeah, for sure. In terms of the trading floor, it's certainly the attitude. It's willing to learn what, what are they going to add to the environment for the other traders, the other people, uh, the team that we have here at Audacity Capital. That's the most important thing when it comes to being a trader here on the floor. It's also obviously about how, whether they are, you know, making their full-time income from trading the FX market. So we want the people here to be a professional environment of traders who are all able to contribute ideas, add value to each other. Hopefully they're all in an environment where they're able to learn and progress on with their own trading as well. Uh, specifically in terms of obviously the talent acquisition team, the interviews that we're going through, it's all about risk, money management. Have they had experience trading with live capital? Do they have experience managing their own risk? Do they know how to control the risk on their account? Because that is the most important thing along with the trading psychology that is going to allow people to be able to successfully be consistently profitable over a, a long period of time. I then got the opportunity to sit down with Kareem, an institutional trading veteran and CEO of Audacity Capital. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the markets? I joined uh, a bank in Germany. It was technically an internship. I traded for them oil and later I moved to uh, FX and later they offered me uh, a job to 
become, um, you know, a full-time trader. Mm -hmm. But the transition moving from an institutional trader to uh, a prop trader or like an individual trader, it's quite, it was quite challenging mm -hmm. because when you are trading for a big firm or, you know, you got like a big pool, you have all the protection and all the tools you need to perform. But when yeah. you're trading for yourself, it is really challenging. I think that's something that people forget is that these huge traders who are working on a trading floor, you know, for a bank, for an investment fund, you have analysts who come up with the ideas, you have the fundamentals guys who are monitoring that, you have the risk guys, and then you have the traders who are pretty much, they're just the execution arm That's correct, of, yeah. of the bigger picture. And then over all of that, you've got a fund manager who effectively has the same. So there's all of these people involved. When you're trading for yourself, you are all of these exactly. people. <laughs> You're your own risk manager, your own analyst, your own trader, your own fund manager. What was that transition like to go from effectively having all these people around you, all these departments that are there to help push that vehicle along, to then having to do that on your own? You are right. This is a, a challenging time. You know, it was quite a big decision in my life. It's all about freedom. So technically what it pushed me to leave the corporate world is technically freedom uh, to be my own boss and to be, uh, to have the freedom to apply my own idea, ideas. Because you just mentioned right now that when you are trading for a big firm, technically you are not implementing your own ideas and you don't have the whole freedom to do whatever you want. Uh, so the transition was quite challenging and I can be completely honest with you that it wasn't easy because mm. uh, when you are used to a way of trading and seeing the market and moving completely to being by yourself, you are, you are like a naked man in the street, you know? <laughs> you just need to do much effort, you need to adapt, you need to learn, you need to, it's like a, exactly, you, you need to develop on a daily basis, you need to make sure you are covering all what you need to do. So it's not that easy in the process, but I really enjoy it. And this is the mm. thing I'm really proud of in, in my career that I managed to transit from uh, institutional to uh, retail trading. You went from being this institutional trader to then being, you know, trading for yourself to then starting a prop firm. Like, what made you decide to start Audacity Capital? How did that come about? Trading in general as a job or as activity is, is quite a lonely uh, uh, activity, That's you know? True, yeah. So the, the thing when I started Audacity is just to be around like-minded people, around mm -hmm. traders. So when we started back in 2012, we used to have our own trading floor here in Tower Hill, which is not far here in London, in the city, with 72 stations. So my plan, it was to get the best guys all together, working together, uh, helping each other, bouncing each other, learning from each other. Nothing is fascinating in life and good in life is when you are around people who share the same passion as you. So when we started back in 2012, it was mainly the early stage of the prop trading with the traditional way, which is when yeah. someone he needs to be on the trading floor uh, with you, he needs to rent a desk, you allocate for, the, for, for them capital. And to be fair, most of them, they used to come from uh, an institutional background. Uh, and this when we funded the, we, we funded the Fund the Trader program. It was mm -hmm. mainly designed in the beginning for the people coming from institutional background. So we used to have negotiations with half million, one million allocation to one trader. Uh, he got a good strategy, he's doing well, coming with a good track records and, you know, and helping them and supporting them on a daily basis. I have to ask you first, the name Audacity, where did that come from? Audacity, this is a good, uh, you know, in French Audacity it means something, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like the market. Audacity, in, when explained in the, in the dictionary, it could be pejorative, which is negative thing, it could be positive. Right. So it's like the market, it's double sword. The market could be really a good thing for you, and as well it could be a really bad thing for you. That's why I think the world or the city is having the courage to face the market, regardless of the outcome, if it's going to be really positive or negative. So when you say to someone, you are audacious or you have audacity, you can take it some as I'm, I'm, I'm insulting you, yeah, and you yeah. are I'm rude to you, and you can take it as well as the biggest compliment. Exact compliment. Like, yeah. So this is what ex the weird uh, combination of the word. Uh, I think this is exactly what explains the situation of the market when you are dealing with it. That's why we come up with this name, which is quite unique. You got sometimes people dating. Wow, what's a name? This is uh, this is something different. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal. Something that we spoke about earlier. And it's something that I think is actually 
I think it's actually really impressive, is Audacity's passion for good traders. The passion for, I mean, I saw that Matthew was explaining that to actually get on the FTP program, you need three months minimum of trading on a live account in your own, in your own results. And I thought that was very, very unique because there's not a lot of companies, there's not a lot of prop firms that actually ask to see you having had, you know, live experience before you go through to the program. So what was your kind of thinking behind that? Why did you say, well, you know what, rather than let someone trade on a demo for three months in our supervision, we want to see them having had experience on a live account for three months and then we'll actually just be happy to give them capital. Well, we have very high percentage, I can, I can guarantee because I know the industry very well, especially the pop trading, we are around 70 to 75% of our current trades profitable. So we make profit wow. w from their profits. It's not that's, that that's like the opposite of exactly. the statistic. Exactly. Because the statistic says like 75 to 85% of retail traders fail to make money in the markets. But you're saying 75% of your traders exactly. are profitable. That's now. correct. That's phenomenal. We're interested in profitable traders. We make money only when they make money. And we are, we are really looking for a long-term relation with when we, we do business with them. That's unique as well, right? So you, you literally only make money when that trader makes money. There's no conflict of interest there. You actually want the traders to succeed because it directly benefits you. Exactly, yeah. When we, someone make money or hit target, we are happy in the office. And so on that pretty positive note, that actually ends our visit to Audacity Capital. Now I must emphasize at this point in the video that we don't have an affiliate link with Audacity Capital or any kind of partnership or anything like that. But I am gonna break down exactly what they offer at the end of the video when I get back to the office because I think what they offer is very unique and I think they're bringing a lot to the table in the proprietary trading space. Now myself and Neve are gonna go and enjoy the rest of our time in London. Currently about 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. I've just grabbed a coffee and I'm now heading to the gym. Just walking around Canary Wharf. I have to say I'm absolutely blown away. This is the first time I've ever been to Canary Wharf. I've been to London a few times, but it's the first time I've been to Canary Wharf. And just the immense scale of the place has absolutely blown me away. It reminds me a lot of Dubai. It's very, very clean. Everything's very new and everywhere you can see there's just new developments going on, building happening everywhere. It's kind of, you know, it's all surrounded by water, so there's yachts everywhere as well. And Canary Wharf seems to have its own security. I've not seen any police the whole time I've been here, but I've seen a lot of security and they're not too keen on you filming or taking photos or hanging around either. So it's a pretty interesting place. But yeah, it's been a it's been an awesome trip so far. I'm just gonna head to the gym and then myself and Neve are heading into the centre of London today to have a little bit of a relaxed day. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I managed to find a gym in Canary Wharf called Hybrid Fitness that were offering free day passes. So I managed to hit a really solid chest and back workout nice and early. You all know I hate to break routine even when I am away. I then headed back to the hotel to get Neve, and we just wandered around Canary Wharf for a bit before heading into the centre of London to just act like tourists for the rest of the day. For some reason Neve dragged me along to this coffee shop that was really overpriced and the coffee was, yeah, it was pretty average. And then we went to visit the King, of course, before heading to the airport to head home. Was that a good crunch? Wait. This is so weird. It's a satisfying, it's a very satisfying crunch. And a tiny little knife in case I tried to stab the pilot to death. Hello. So the times are in about 20 past seven. Myself and Neve have spent most of the day in London doing touristy things. 
And then we came to the airport for around about half past five. Half past five? Six. We came to the airport for around about six. And then our flight got delayed until nine. So instead of just hanging about the airport, we booked ourselves into the lounge. If you're in the airport for two or three hours, the chances are you're going to spend a lot of money. Stuff in the airport is extremely expensive. But for £50 for two of us, we have lounge access, we've got free Wi-Fi, coffee and drinks and food and all that kind of stuff. We've already eaten like two or three servings of food, haven't we? I have, Ricky. I've already had two or three plates of food, which would probably be worth how much? How much do you reckon we've spent already? Leave used to work in a restaurant, so she can probably give a good estimate. 40 for drinks and food. Really? That's not including your coffee and your muffins. So we've almost hit. Our in-house hospitality expert estimates that we've eaten already about... 40 pounds worth of stuff. And we've only been here for about an hour. So that's pretty good going. The lounge was £50 for both of us pretty much up until our flight comes. So we're just going to hang out here. I've been checking over my crypto portfolio, just seeing how much money I'm losing. That's always good. After a long day of walking about and having sore feet, it's always good to just remind yourself of how much money you've lost today in one of the most speculative markets in human history. So. It's been a pretty good weekend with Audacity Capital. I'm actually really looking forward. See, you've already seen all of that by now, but I'm really looking forward to getting back and just going through all the footage and editing it. But anyway, guys, we're going to probably eat some more food. I'm going to try and take a nap if possible. I don't know how that's going to pan out. And then we're going to head for this flight. The next time I check in, I'll probably be back at the office to give a full overview of the trip and how we got on with Audacity Capital. So I'll catch up with you shortly. So today is Tuesday the 27th of September. I didn't actually get a chance to film anything yesterday to catch up with you guys. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very briefly run over some of what Audacity offers. And I'm going to have to read this off my phone because there are a lot of points to touch on and I don't want to miss any. One other quick thing, a lot of you are asking for updates on my Lark funding account. You can see I'm in a trade on it at the moment. It's sitting at about $260,000. The account started at $250,000 at the start of last month. August was a great month. I was actually up maybe six or seven percent on the account. September, I've lost a few percent. So I'm sitting just under five percent up on that challenge account at the moment, out of the 10 percent that you need to make to hit target on the account. So Audacity offer two account types. The first is their funded trader program, which is a little bit of a slower and a more gradual build up. And then they offer the ability trading account type, which is more of a challenge account style like we're used to seeing with other online proprietary trading firms. Now on the funded trader program that they offer, you can actually get a funded account within 24 hours if you pass their three-step process. So their three-step process is first, you fill out an application on their website. The second, you attend an interview, which can be face-to-face -face or it can just be over the phone. The third step is you sign a contract. And the fourth step is you get funded. Now, this funded trader program, you start on $15,000. There's an initial fee of £298 and then £99 month on month after that. That never increases from there. You'll continually pay £99 per month. Now, this account type is designed for traders that have a little bit more experience because they do want to see three months minimum of live trading statements, whether it's a MyFX book or whether it's your brokerage statements. They want to see that you've traded live for at least three months. You'll then get your $15,000 and every time you reach 10% on the account, they'll simply double the account size until you have a $480,000 trading account. Now this account type comes with 50-50 profit splits, which some of you, you'll probably think 50-50 profit splits, that doesn't sound very good. Guys, see, to be honest, you go back 10 years in the proprietary trading game, you'd be lucky if a firm offered you 20 or 30% profit splits. The profit splits were never very good. The thing we have to remember about Audacity Capital is they are a genuine proprietary trading firm. You'll never trade on a demo. You get issued with a live account from 
the very start. So you are actually backed with real live trading capital. When I was there, they told me a number of their traders are already trading $480,000 trading accounts with Audacity Capital. And they've been so happy with their experience there that even though they've had offerings from other proprietary trading firms with better profit splits, they've actually opted to stay with Audacity, which was pretty cool to see. Now, of course, like with most prop firms, Audacity do have stringent rules such as trading around news and holding over weekends and that kind of thing. But again, since you are trading their real money, these rules are understandable. Now, the second account type is similar to what we see from other proprietary trading firms. It's a two-step evaluation process which happens on a demo account. You're allowed to trade over news, you're allowed to trade over weekends as well. There is a one-time refundable fee for setting the assessment, so there's no monthly fees continuing on from there. And then traders receive a 75-25 profit split after they get the account. Now of course there are drawdown limits. On the first stage of this challenge you have a 15% overall drawdown limit and a seven and a half percent daily drawdown limit. So you can see the drawdown limits there are pretty fair. That's pretty cool to see. Now, when you pass the two-step assessment process on the demo account, they actually give you a live funded account, which is a little bit different to some of the other firms operating in the space. That's pretty cool to see as well. And of course you do get that one-time fee refunded when you pass the assessment as well. So to round up this video, I had a great weekend down in London with Audacity Capital. It was a great pleasure to meet their team, see their operation and hear about their kind of ethos and approach to the markets. Now it's certainly a much more traditional approach to proprietary trading and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really like that. In the modern day, we seem to have this sort of instant gratification mentality. Everyone wants to trade for five minutes a day. They want to be able to trade exclusively from their phone. They want to be able to have access to hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds within the snap of their fingers as well. And it's one of the biggest problems I see amongst newer and even intermediate traders is just expecting everything to come very, very quickly. We must have realistic expectations. And if you're in this game, you must be in it because you genuinely enjoy it. A passion for this industry is the only thing that's going to carry you through periods of drawdown which are going to come inevitably. But anyway guys that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Day in the Life. If you are a beginner trader and you're looking to take your first steps into the market check out KB Trading's beginner PDF course. It's a phenomenal course which will teach you the foundations of trading the financial markets. If you're an intermediate trader and you're just trying to develop consistency, perhaps you want to go for financial funding, you should check out our advanced trader video course. Over 24 modules will show you how to take all of the knowledge and experience you currently have and translate that into consistently profitable results. Here at KB, over the past few years, I've had the pleasure of seeing countless of our students go from having little to no understanding of the financial markets to now being able to produce consistent results, achieving financial funding, achieving max allocation with online proprietary trading firms and doing very, very well in this field. It would be a great pleasure to welcome some of you to KB. So check out some of those links in the description. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Day in the Life. Thanks as always for watching. Please do drop it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.